All right, you've probably heard about the latest Disney flop over uh, Thanksgiving weekend, but um, I haven't personally had a chance to gloat over it, so let's talk about that. Uh, this is the Daily Wire's report on it. Disney's new animated film, Wish, failed to perform well at the box office over Thanksgiving holiday weekend. It's especially tough for the studio following the massive flop of The Marvels earlier this month. Wish debuted in third place at the box office, grossing just $19.5 million in its three-day opening weekend, um, which is... For, a, for an original Disney film on Thanksgiving weekend, $20 million is uh, abysmal. And it got $31 million over the five-day Thanksgiving weekend, which is also abysmal. This was significantly less than forecasted and doesn't come close to recouping the $200 million production budget. And I always have to remind everyone that when you hear about the production budgets, that's, that's only uh, the tip of the iceberg because that doesn't count the marketing budgets. Um, which could be even more than, than the production budget. So uh, the fantasy musical stars Ariana DeBose as the main character, Asha, and Chris Pine as the villain, King Magnifico. The synopsis says, Young Asha makes a wish so powerful that it's answered by a cosmic force, a little ball of boundless energy called Star. With Star's help, Asha must save her kingdom from King Magnifico and prove that when the will of one courageous human connects with the magic of the stars, Wondrous things can happen. And uh, Wish has a 49% uh, uh, rating on Rotten Tomatoes, so critics don't like it either. Audiences don't care. Critics don't like it. It's just a, it's a flop all around. And this is, you know, there was a, a run there. There was a stretch, and we'll talk about this in a second, where, like, every Disney film was not only a smash success commercially, but was also critically acclaimed. If you go to Rotten Tomatoes, whatever, however much stock you put in Rotten Tomatoes, which I think that Rotten Tomatoes is, is, you know, it's actually, it gets a bad rap, but it's, there are exceptions, but it generally gives you a pretty good idea of whether a movie is good or not. Um, so it used to be that every film is a, is a commercial smash success, and every film has like 95% of Rotten Tomatoes, and uh, now the exact opposite is the case. Nearly every film they're putting out is a flop, and uh, everybody hates it, and even the critics can't find a reason to like it. Now, um, the, this... This is just Thanksgiving weekend, but really uh, this whole year has been bleak. Here's IGN on that. Um, After Wish's underwhelming opening this past weekend, the spotlight is on Disney once again, and the rough year this once incredibly reliable brand has had. To specify, as Variety pointed out in a recent analysis of this troubling box office streak, Disney looks primed to end 2023 with a single, with, without, without a single movie crossing the $1 billion mark. To be clear, the billion-dollar mark is not an easy one to cross. Only two movies, Barbie and the Super Mario Brothers movie, have done it this year, but that used to be nearly a given for Disney. Um, we're not going to count 2020, 2021, which were uh, abnormal years because of the COVID-19 lockdowns. Um, but going back to pre-pandemic times, Disney had a whopping $7 billion hits in 2019 alone. So they had seven films in 2019 that went over a billion dollars. Uh, Last year, they had one, which was Avatar, and this year, they have none. So it is trending in exactly the uh, wrong direction if you're Disney. You know, the holidays are here, and while you're out shopping for your kids, family, and friends, don't forget to shop for your pets, too. I know I never do. Give your dog the gift of a healthier and happier life with Rough Greens. Naturopathic Dr. Dennis Black, the founder of Rough Greens, is uh, focused on improving the health of every dog in America. Before I started feeding my dog Rough Greens, I had no idea that dog food is dead food. It contains very little nutritional value. Think about it. Nutrition isn't brown, it's green. Let Rough Greens bring your dog's food back to life. Rough Greens is a supplement that contains all the necessary vitamins, minerals, probiotics, omega oils, digestive enzymes, and antioxidants that your dog needs. You don't have to go out and buy new dog food. Just sprinkle Rough Greens on their food every day. Dog owners everywhere are raving about Rough Greens. It supports healthy joints, improves bad breath, boosts energy levels, and so much more. We are what we eat, and that goes for our dogs, too. Naturopathic Dr. Dennis Black is so confident Rough Greens will improve your dog's health, he's offering my listeners a free Jumpstart trial bag so your dog can try it. Get a free Jumpstart trial bag delivered straight to your door in just a few business days. Go to roughgreens.com slash matt or call 844-ROUGH-700. That's R-U-F-F-Greens.com slash matt or call 844-ROUGH-700 today. We've talked about why Disney is falling apart. Um... Partly, it's a it's a total lack of originality. 
you know, that, that's some of this. Like, these movies just aren't very good. They're not original. They're not innovative. They're not, they're not interesting. It's the same thing over and over again. Uh, you know, it, it turns out that these franchises, you can only go back to the well. Like, eventually, the well does dry up. Now, this Wish film is not a franchise film. This is actually their attempt at something like, a, uh, you know, a, 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 an original film. But it's bad. And um, nobody cares. Nobody wants to see it. But then the second thing is also... Um, and Disney has recently acknowledged this, in fact, that their foray into the culture war has been a total disaster for them. So that's the other thing that we should acknowledge here and that you're not going to see this. Certainly, you're not going to see any mainstream media report that acknowledges this, but it's true that uh, Disney, you know, we can put them in the Bud Light ca category. That, that's, a, that's a big part of the story here. That their failure is at least partially, a big, in, in, in large part, I think, um, a success of conservatives in the culture war. You know, Disney decided to go to war against conservatives in a very direct and kind of deliberate and explicit way. And they lost. They lost the war. And now they have a, a year at least a year of flops to show for it. So again, you're not going to find any media report that acknowledges that. You're not going to say that that will not happen. But it's the truth. The truth is that we pulled a we pulled a Bud Light on Disney too. So when you look at the success of conservative boycott efforts, um, and even boycott isn't. I don't. I don't even think that's quite the right term exactly. It's not exactly a boycott. It's kind of a branding effort. Okay, you have these companies that are trying to brand us a certain way as conservatives. Certainly that's what Disney's doing. And we have turned around and branded them. So it's not so much boycott as branding. We successfully branded Bud Light, you know, a far left crazy comp woke company, and it destroyed them. And we have branded Disney the same. And it's killing them too. So this is, these, are, these are major successes for conservatives in the culture war. These are the kinds of successes that, uh, that seemed impossible for years. And, that, and that, that even now you have conservatives, this is not possible. You can't, you, can't take, you, can't, you, know, you can't make a dent in a company like Disney. Oh, yes, you can, because we did. This is not all happenstance. This is, this is deliberate. Um, and even in spite of that, you know, this is what makes it so remarkable is that there's probably nothing Bud Light can do. Bud Light is screwed forever. There's just nothing they can do. Uh, Disney, I mean, they could come back from this. Like all they have to do is say, look, we, okay, we're, we're bound out of the culture where we want, not, we want nothing to do with it anymore. And, and, uh, and then, but then also start making films that people want to see. Just take the wokeness and the political correctness out of the films entirely. This Wish film, from what I understand, it's, it's uh, at least by recent Disney standards, it's not like overly woke. But it still is because, of course, you've got the white male who's the villain and then you've got uh, the protagonist has to be this young brown girl and she wants to grant everybody's wishes and the greedy, uh, horrible white man. Does, so it's like they, they can't pull back from that. If they just pulled back from that and started telling good stories, put the wokeness aside, put the political correctness aside, um, if they just did that, then they could start churning out billion dollar movies again. But they they can't. It's like they can't stop themselves at this point. They're on a, they're on a train that they can't stop. And now they're uh, paying the price for it, which I think is fantastic. Thanks for checking out this video. If you'd like to listen to my full podcast on the go, you can check out the Matt Walsh show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts.